Hello and welcome. Try this problem out, give it a shot, and then press play when, you solve, when you're when you ready to solve it with me. Alright, so I'm really kind of torn in this question if the fastest way is by um, is by graphing it, by graphing calculator, or by doing it algebraically. So I'll show you both. Algebraically, they want to know um, here with this function, h of t, right, equals negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 80. They want to know um, at what number of seconds will it re reach maximum height. So uh, t, right, is like the x value of our points, and then h of t is the height of the actual force. So you have the number of seconds and the height. That's like x and y. So they just want to know, they don't want to even know how, how high it goes, they just want to know at what time will it reach its maximum height. Well, you might remember that since the a value here is negative, we have a parabola like that's just kind of, right, like that. It's like a frown. And somewhere there's this maximum point. And the x value of that max, right, the x value is going to be the time in this case. And that always equals negative b over 2a. Then we had to find the height, we had to plug in negative b over 2a to the function h, which is, that's where it gets a little bit annoying, and the graphing calculator would definitely speed things up. But, and we'll do that here for fun. But here, let's just find negative b over 2a. B is the coefficient of the t term, so B is 64, and A is the coefficient of the t squared term, negative 16. So negative B over 2A is negative 64 over 2 times negative 16, negative 32, and that is t equals positive 2. Now if you plug in 2 to your function, you actually get the height as well. It's for fun. You do not have to do this for this question. The answer is 2 seconds. right? h of 2 equals negative 16 times 4. And I'm showing this to you because they might always ask it, or you might want to think about how this is done. It's really valuable information. 64 times 2 plus 80. So here we get negative 64 plus 128 plus 80. Right? So negative 64 plus 128 plus 80, and we get 144. So at 2 seconds, we're at 144. Do we know? Do we know? Is it feet? I, no, we don't know. Uh, so it's 144 something feet above the ground, I guess. Um, so that's how we do it algebraically. And then they want to know um, during which uh, during which time interval in seconds uh, is the height decreasing. So after the maximum, if you know this is the maximum, if you know that, you know anything after it's going to be decreasing. So it's any time where t is not greater than or equal to 2, but greater than 2. What was looking at a graphing calculator? Uh, well, you go to the y equals button here. You want to clear off any uh, old functions here. All right, clear these off. Okay. Okay, so now just enter in your function, negative 16x squared. And remember the negative signs in the bottom, don't use the subtraction sign. Plus 64x plus 80. Press graph. Now I can't really see it here, so I'm going to go to zoom, and then I think fit is number 9. Fit will basically get us a nice picture, I think, of this graph. Not 9, but 0. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we can see that this thing's peaking around here. So I put a second trace. I'm interested in the maximum because I know it's going to peak somewhere. Then I pick a left bound and a right bound. You can't really see my cursor up here. It's really messy. But the cursor to the left of the maximum, hit X, enter. And a right bound is bringing your cursor to the right of the maximum. Enter and then guess. You can see at 2 seconds, see this point oh 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 one six. that's an estimation. X is 2, the height's 144. I think this is certainly faster if you need to find the height as well as the time, but I'm not really sure uh, what you prefer. But you can see here on the graph, anything after that maximum, the height is decreasing. And if you're not convinced, hit trace. And you can kind of follow along the graph and see how the heights are here. The Y values are decreasing after that point, or you can hit second graph to see a table of your values, and it might say this in the bottom, might not, but if it says press plus for delta table values, that means you can change the intervals. So if I want to go up by tens, I put plus ten, and then now it jumps up by tens, and I can change that by pressing plus and then whatever, thirties. I can change those intervals to see how the graph is changing here, and I might get scientific notation, but you can plug in values to play with it. All right, I hope this helped.
Now, they, we might need to be a little bit more precise here for the time interval. Um, so let me just modify this a little bit more. You see, because the if this is a ball being thrown, um, we don't know if this is a ball or whatever, it's being thrown. Eventually, as a decrease, it's got to hit the ground, right? Or it's got to come back to zero, we assume. We don't know if there's anything in the way. There's really not enough information. Let's say we can assume it keeps going until it hits the ground. Um, so it's I when I said t is greater than or equal to two, I should be a little more precise, right? It's not gonna go down forever. It's gonna stop at some point. It's gonna hit some object, I I suppose. Of course, there could be a cliff there, or uh, and we don't know how many seconds it will keep going for. Uh, but let's assume that uh, it starts here and ends up at the ground here, right? This is typical kind of assumption. And if we go back to our graph, right? That means you want to know where does it hit zero at this point here. That's a root, right? So you can factor this thing out. You can use the quadratic formula. I'm going to just use the, the calculator, hit second trace, and we want to know a uh, zero. Zeros are roots. That's when the height is zero. So I'm going to focus on this root right here. My cursor is to the left of that root. Then I go to the right of it. I hit enter, enter. And I see when x is 5, y is just about 0. It says negative 1 times 10 to the negative 11th, right? That is negative point, well, then 0, 0, 10 times, and then a 1. And the calculator does this pretty often. It's just estimating. You can assume that's 0. So that means when x is 5, the height is 0. So the time, right, interval when t is greater than 2, but less than or equal to 5, uh, it's going to be decreasing in that interval here. That's this chunk right here. All right, so I hope this helped.